Hello, 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 Sicily, I've got a little husky for you, seared and braised with carrots, shallots, and celery, black pepper, and mayo, to taste. Yum, yum, yum. But seriously, what's cracking all about, and what am I doing here at all? Why is the Sicily showing up on your screen, and what the... Anyway, this is a little fortnight I've been planning to do for months. I really wanted to do something that didn't take me 30 hours plus to, to make a video and actually let me deliver some hopefully interesting information to you guys and gals. And here we are. Cracking is hopefully gonna be a once a week deal. It's not a let's play per se, it's gonna be a strategy guide, maybe certain missions. We are starting with Unity of Command 2, as you see, probably to accompany my little review, which you should watch. Please do. <laughs> It <laughs> seriously took me 30, more than 30 hours uh, to make, so please do go do watch it, I, I'll, I'll love you for it, I, I seri seriously, I'll build a temple for you, personally, uh, well probably not personally, but collectively, I will build a temple, I'll build a shrine, I, I'll find people to sacrifice, and I'll do a human sacrifice for you, uh, uh, probably not seriously, but, but still. The point is made, I, I really... <laughs> want to see you <laughs> because it really it really it really encouraged me to do something and to do more complicated things but in between those complicated things because they take so much time i would like to publish little chunks of content that doesn't really kill me to make it and i'd really like to deliver some interesting information to you so here's a little message from hexaboo it's slightly less interesting Hello, I'm Hexabo, and I would like to talk to you about the plight of alcoholic cockroaches from Bolivia. I know that cockroaches aren't that important, and Bolivia is a country of wonderful natural sights and, and millennial culture and, and, and probably wonderful coca fields, uh, but I'm only interested in the plight of alcoholic cockroaches of Bolivia. Yes, I'm a horrible person. Person. Uh, don't listen to me. Switch this off and please go away. <laughs> Seriously, though, today we're gonna talk about Hosky, the Allied 1943 naval and airborne invasion. Uh, representing this third mission of the main campaign of Unity of Command 2. Why? Why the third mission, you ask? And the answer is that the first two missions, Wadia Karit and Tunisia, are uh, kind of easy. Probably if you're new to the game, into the franchise, you probably not agree, especially about Tunisia, where the weather could screw you over pretty hard. But I've played about 200 hours of Unity of Command 1, and I'm pretty used to it. And if you are a cute little newbie, let me tell you that Husky is the, really the first mission that brings you the feel of the original Unity of Command 1, where you really can miss just one little tiny movement point to take the last objective and actually win the campaign, uh, or at least the scenario, with a brilliant victory. That's the kind of game Unity of Command 1 was and is. Unity of Command 2 has the decency of having the first two missions actually relatively easy, especially Wadja Carrot, it's pretty easy, and if you can't do it, just do it a little more. And maybe ask me a few questions in the comments and I'll tell you how to crack it. I said cracking. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about this mission, let's talk about my experience with it. I was going to use my original replay from my normal campaign, but I found that in the past couple of months, the game developers have actually tweaked this and most of the scenarios in this campaign, making them harder. <laughs> Actually, hard to restart the campaign for you, so this is classic. This mission isn't classic, I'm not gonna play hard, I'm not crazy, I'm not a nutter, I'm gonna go to the nut house, mummy! No, I'm gonna play classic. A race? Alright, this has taken long enough. Let's get to the tips. Let's get to the things I'd like to tell you. Let's get to the bloody mission. Let's crack it. And so, it's turn one, we've got a beautiful island, we've got these beautiful troops, we've got this beautiful enemy. Let's destroy them all. 
But first, a few words about the objectives. We've got seven objectives in this scenario, and we could pretty comfortably divide them into three groups. The early objectives, like Lakasa, Catania, Rarefield, and Syracuse, which we'll have to take by turn three, most of them. Um, we've got the uh, western parts of the island with Masala, just like the wine, Trapani, Palermo, uh, which we have to take by turn six. They look kind of remote, but they're much easier than you think. And we've got Messina, which is a group unto its own. This is the most difficult objective in this mission, and it will make you restart it. It doesn't look like much, this is an Italian infantry unit with just four steps, but it's got two steps of entrenchment, it's fortified, plus by the time you reach it, which will be about turn 8, 9, 10, it will get reinforced, it'll have seven steps instead of four. So it's a really difficult uh, objective to take, and you often will not have enough time to take uh, this objective. And so, let's look at what we need to do in the first turn. We've got a bunch of those landing crafts, We've got two airborne divisions, more on those later. So, with the naval landing, it's pretty straightforward. You have to take Syracuse on turn one, just send troops next to it, bombard Syracuse with your ships, and take it. The unit in it is very weak, just take it, come on, you don't need my advice to do it. Lekata, just send your troops in there. You can take it by turn three, but I see absolutely no reason not to. The Germans will not counterattack, it's very easy to take, and it gets you a bonus. Plus, take that port in order to be able to set up the American HQ there. Don't forget to get rid of that infantry unit next to it so that you can repair the bridge on turn one. Preparing bridges is important. So otherwise, there isn't much to tell. Just send your troops, there aren't many options for your landing craft, so a few more comments about this particular stage of the game. First of all, naval bombardment. You can use it four times in this mission. Please don't waste it all on turn one. Use it twice on Syracuse, where it's really kind of needed, plus on that uh, Italian infantry division next to the port. Leave at least two naval bombardments for later. First and foremost, for Messina, you will need it. A naval bombardment is extremely extremely powerful, and despite the city, despite the two steps of fortification, it will get a minus three penalty to its attack, it will still give you suppression, give that bloody unit suppression, so it's crucial that you leave at least one uh, naval bombardment for Messina, plus one for contingencies, ideally for Messina too, but you will probably use it elsewhere as I have in this replay, in this playthrough of this mission. Next up, airborne division. I believe that airborne divisions are the key to this uh, mission, and properly using them will make it so much easier to get to Messina really fast. First of all, you've got the 82nd American Airborne Division, and there is a really tempting place to send it to, up there in the north. As you can see, if you take that hex, you will take the supply hub and you will cut off the railroad so that supplies Trapani, Masala and Palermo. It's really tempting, but in my opinion it's really a bad idea to send your troops there. Why? First of all, it's a really open place. It's just a plane, and you you see that there are mobile German mobile units in there. The AI will send them to your paratroopers, and they will not be able to defend that place well. And even if that unit survives, and remember, this is an elite infantry unit, it has uses. Even if it survives, turn one, even turn two, I've seen it done, I've seen it happen. There will not be enough time for you to reach that place to provide the, this particular uh, airborne unit with supplies. So it will probably get disbanded anyway, even if it's not killed by the Germans or Italians. So please don't send them there. It's really tempting, but it's not worth it. Disrupting the Western objectives is kind of a good idea, but you don't have to do it on turn one. You'll have plenty of time to disrupt their supply later. So please send them there. This way you'll take a supply hub, Plus, because of the proximity of the river, this place is reasonably easy to defend, you will not get your airborne unit killed, and you'll prevent the German and Italian mobile troops from getting from the western part of the island into the eastern one. The British paratroopers, or to use the period-appropriate term, parachutists, uh, are a bit trickier. I used to send them into the hills there, just to disrupt another bridge, but the mission has got tweaks, and the Germans have got more powerful mobile troops now, especially that particular panzer division with five steps, it's a veteran, 
and it's got a step of tigers and we probably just flatten those paratroopers just no way if you send them anywhere in that area you will just not get them out of there so where i send them now is right next to the american paratroopers so they have a little party there that little town is very poorly defended you can land there and now you've got two at least six step infantry units in the western part of the island and guess what we'll use them to take Marsala, Trapani and Palermo while the rest of your forces will be taking care of the rest of the island. I think this is it for turn one. Let's see how it plays out. It's turn three and we've got our first crisis. Catania Airfield, which you could have taken on turn one with your British airborne troops, but shouldn't because you'll lose them. And now it's turn three, you have to take uh, the airfield. It's pretty well defended by the tanks. I have brought a really powerful infantry unit there, but it's not enough. The odds are too crappy. So this is where you need to use one of your, well, at least I had to use one of my uh, naval bombardments. So you might probably have to use it. So bombard those tanks, dislodge them, kill them, and get your units in there in Catania, and really mop up those units around Etna. Yeah, that mountain is Mount Etna, the biggest volcano in Italy and one of the tallest in Europe. Just a tiny little interesting fact for you. This is about where you should stop in the south. Yeah, reach those bridges, mop up those units, kill off all the mobile units so that the Germans can't retaliate. And really what you have left by this point is take the western objectives and take the northern railway to Messina. This is it. The battle is swinging in your favor. Oh, and try not to use that British tank brigade too much, or leave it somewhere where German tanks can reach it. It's extremely weak, and that's probably the division you're gonna lose in this map. <laughs> It's turn six, and you must pay attention. Anyway, you see that something has changed in the West. By turn six, you actually have to take all three of those objectives, and I have already taken Marsala. It was on turn five. As you can see, those airborne units are really useful there, and in general, it takes three to four divisions to get rid of those objectives. I usually send a tank unit there, but this time I didn't. So, take Marcel and Trapani, they boost your supply efficiency. Palomo, and the bonus it provides is slightly more interesting. It gives you a card with a naval landing brigade. And let me spoil this game a little bit for you. You will need it, because there will be a particular mission in northern Italy where the secondary objective is not reachable by your normal troops. You will have to use a naval brigade or a, or an airborne division and th say in this playthrough I didn't get one so a naval brigade was very handy so get one and don't lose it. It's a persistent card so don't lose that unit. Now on to the eastern part of the island. As I said before, please don't rush the south. Make sure you secure the bridges, prevent the Germans from blowing them up, and actually screw the south, one of those bridges has been blown. But you can go through those Panzer Grenadiers, they're pretty weak. Don't go, don't even think of trying to go through those uh, German airborne troops. They're pretty well defended in there, they've got an elite artillery unit, they're in the mountains, so they're probably gonna be the last unit you're gonna kill. The Panzer Grenadiers are remnantly killable on the other hand, so break through there. And as you can see, I'm advancing with my tanks on the northern railway, this is what you should do. Just break through all of that. It 
battalion and German infantry and maybe tanks if there's still any left. And make sure you bring infantry units and maybe tank units with engineer steps uh, closer to Messina. As close as humanly possible because you will need them to crack those fortifications. This is the end. What else do I have to say? In order to take Messina, you really need two full turns. Leave as few German units alive as possible. In this case, I got rather unlucky. I had to deal with this elite Falschimjäger unit, but I killed it and I still have my naval bombardment. Leave naval bombardment for Messina. I used this, I suppressed some of the defenders and actually uh, got through their fortifications with my engineer units. This is how you do it and this is it. Good luck trying to crack uh, Husky. This was my replay of it and I hope you find this useful. This has been my first experience doing something like this. I'm incredibly flustered as you can hear. So, if you've got anything to say, if I've elicited any emotions in you, either positive or negative, please leave a comment. Any feedback is really welcome, and if you really like this stuff, please do subscribe. I really appreciate it. And hopefully next week I'll make another cracking. It might involve a particular Panzer Corps 2 if I play enough of it by that point, so just you wait and see. And now... To end this video, a little joke from Hexabu. What do you call a Pope and Dool's brand of potato preserves? The Tatican. Night!